Why did I get involved with film? I just really like the magic of it. It's storytelling, tangibly, and you know, there's so much more that meets the eye. I kept going with film from the age of 12 up until now, and I always knew I wanted to work in the film industry. I would have had to take another whole year of classes to do environmental studies, so film it was. And I'm so glad I fell into it, actually. I got involved in film because I've loved film ever since I was a little, little kid, and it just seemed like the perfect choice. I suppose I just came to the realization of, you know, wanting to do something that you enjoy for the rest of your life. I got involved in film because when I was about 10 years old, my mom took me to see The Gangs of New York in theaters, and that was such an incredible experience because I, I never would have imagined that you could walk into a theater and uh, just experience another world, another universe that you would never otherwise have an opportunity to, to live through. I thought that was incredibly magical. I was always interested in film and I took 46, the intro to cinema class, and it was awesome and I was like, yes, this is, this is where I want to be. I was always interested in photography because that's what my dad did, but I guess I like moving pictures a lot more than still shots. I took my first film class and it was all over. I've always loved film, so I just was like, why not? And just went for it. I had a brief interlude where I wasn't sure if I was going to do film, but I basically was considering it since high school. So. When I was in elementary school, me and my dad would watch movies all the time and he would try to show me all the classics and so I just fell in love with film and then I just decided that I wanted to make movies. <laughs> well, I've always been into film, actually. I remember as a kid I was really into uh, like Dick Tracy and Batman. I remember really wanting to do stories like that. I wanted to sell like a story very visually. Those are very visual films. I've always been interested in storytelling. I started college as a, a triple major and then when I transferred to UCSB I realized that that would take me a long time. So I guess through like trial and error I found out that I was probably best suited to film and media studies. Something that I understand and I have a connection with, so I chose film. I've always been a visual person. I like storytelling and I really felt that film kind of embodied all that I really wanted to learn. I watched Lord of the Rings when I was in middle school and when I saw it for the first time I immediately thought like I need to do this, I want to be part of this. I transferred over here as like a media studies major. I did like a bunch of radio stuff and TV and then once I transferred here like film was the only option and turned out to be a good choice. I started out as an art major and I didn't know I wanted to go into film, um, but I really like storytelling and I thought art and storytelling, the happy medium is animation. So that's what I've been doing all this time. There were a few movies that, uh, that really kind of were the I guess motivators. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, movies that I watched a lot as a kid that my parents actually recorded um, off of TV, so I always watched them in VHS. I got involved with film because in high school, whenever I had a project to do, I would always make a film. I would never write an essay or make a poster board. I would only do films. I actually applied as a mechanical engineer. I've always loved film and art, and in high school I was a big like art person, but I didn't think that you could make a career out of art or anything like that, so I went into, I just applied to random colleges and I got into UCSD as an undecided major and I was just like looking around and then I took Film 46 and I just fell in love with film. Film really has a power to communicate to a larger audience. It's somewhere that I could be creative and honestly uh, work in an environment that I want to and accomplish the things that I want to. Um, after taking my last comm class, I decided I never wanted to do anything comm related again and gave film a try. I was originally an environmental science major and slowly realized that it just wasn't for me. I saw you know, the teamwork of film production and everything that went into making a film totally interested me. And so I decided this is what I want to do. This is the atmosphere that drives me, being able to work these long hours and hard hours with people that I love and people that support me and that was, that was a big reason. I took a 
film after school program in high school. And uh, I was really interesting and I did random little commercials and I thought maybe I can make a career out of it. It was a process basically of elimination. History didn't work, science didn't work, math I hated. Uh, and then English, you, you figure you can get that down. Um, and literature and all that and just basically film. My dad was basically like, you like movies? Film. Favorites. You know, I don't really believe in favorites. Um, I believe that favorites are a figment of Rob's imagination, but I will humor you. Favorite instructor is gonna have to be Sarkar. Sort of like a mind fornication kind of deal. I loved all of my professors. That's not a lie. Professor Holt. She's incredibly enthusiastic and her passion is contagious. Professor Wolf. You could say almost anything in discussion. It could be really, really dumb and he'll make it sound like he said something really profound. I started referring to Professor Wolf as Wolfie, but he doesn't know that. Professor Wolf, taken three classes with him, except he does now. Dana Driscoll. Dana Driscoll. Dana Driscoll. Dana Driscoll. Dana Driscoll. Definitely Dana Driscoll. Professor Driscoll. My favorite professor is Dana Driscoll. He's been completely supportive of me and my projects ever since the beginning. Dana's loving it in the back background. <laughs> the uh, Dana Driscoll, Chris Jenkins combo. Chris Jenkins, love him. Christopher Jenkins, my first quarter here, I took his green screen course, a production class where you make an environmental film documentary and just really learned a lot. Well, people say to me sometimes, like, EAB is where I found my home at UCSB, or like, EAB is the place I found, you know, found my calling at UCSB. So, um, for me and for, you know, most people involved, it's sort of this place that is special. It's sort of this place that they were able to find, find a space that they could express their ideas. Joe Palladino is probably my favorite person in the entire department because he has been the most helpful and I can 100% say with all honesty that I would not be graduating without the help of Joe Palladino. So Joe, thank you. Hey Saki, can I give you a hand? Looks like you already have! Oh, that, that's fun. Saki, can you sing a song? No! My favorite class at UCSB film related was um, Forensic Media with Greg Siegel. It was the first seminar that I ever had and it was really interesting because it was sort of like a section but with a professor which really made it interesting. Probably Psychonautica actually. Yeah, Psychonautica. We took our field trip to the Integratron and we camped out in the desert for like a couple days. Went inside this sound bath where they played quartz bowls and they vibrated frequencies in your body. That was really sweet. The film theory series with Sarkar and Dan Reynolds. I'm taking 192B with Sarkar. I really liked film noir to get last year with Professor Brasuti. I really enjoyed remix culture. 101T, history of television with Holt. I love, 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 love Film 54, Hollywood anatomy of an industry. It's incredibly motivational, just really fun guests. It's such a fun class. My favorite class would be 102, uh, acting and directing. It's acting and directing with Jackie Apodaca. Pretty much everything that UCSB has to offer on the production side have really like helped me to be a better filmmaker. It's by far uh, 106, and that was mainly because I made a film. 106, because it was just the most fulfilling experience. I got to make my own film. I made my baby, essentially. Uh, I love the production classes, they've, they've been great. You know, that's what I feel like I'm coming out of here with some, some good knowledge. Not to say I don't hate the theory classes, but you know, they're, they're not bad. Um, 107S, which is contemporary animation, I've taken it twice now. It really did help me like also solidify like that's what I want to do, I want to go into animation. Experimental film with Professor Penley. Brannigan's film aesthetics class, he's a character. You know, it's Jackie Apodaca's 104. 104 would definitely have to take the, take the cake for my favorite class because that's where I finally got to edit my Beard in the Box video. I'm gonna make this a full go to.
Disco Team. And that is definitely my proudest moment. One thing that you should never do is damage equipment. I know I've never damaged equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't damage equipment. My favorite project that I worked on was Blue Horizons. They arrived in Australia in 1859 so the locals could hunt something to alleviate their immense boredom. But little did the locals know that they, or at least I got to make a short documentary and it was pretty much the best experience ever. Pass the parcel. It really showed me how passionate um, UCSB filmmakers can be um, and how they use their resources. I really enjoyed working on Scared Sheetless and Ruined by the Talkies for the Real Loud Film Festival. Michelle Musser's Ruined by the Talkies, the Real Loud. I really liked working on the 106s I worked on. I really, I, I've worked on so many that uh, it's really actually hard to even remember what I've worked on. Kissing Marjorie Clean. <laughs> Ain't that bright, Mr. Chan? No. No, what? Look, Emily, no. Yeah, kissing Marjorie Clean. <laughs> My favorite project was a promo video that I made for Magic Lantern. And we shot against a green screen, and it was my first uh, shoot against a green screen and my first experience with After Effects. So I got to really mess around and have a lot of fun with that. Cooperate, which was part of the green screen films. It was the first time I got to do a documentary inside an actual um, course taken at school, and it was incredibly challenging. I think the final product is something that I'm the most proud of. I would probably say Killer Joke just because it was uh, more of a learning experience, and there was a lot more, it was, it was more elaborate, and it was more um, ambitious, and it was more, um, in some way, I won't say it was more fun, but it was definitely more challenging. I really liked the 106 that I worked on, it's called Over and Out, and I'm Melissa directed it. Back and is fine now, that was so really the first time. Take it. Um, Are you sure? I understood mm -hmm. how a Thanks. student film works or film works at all. Um, it was a lot of fun and something that I'm really proud of. This past year, I worked on Staring at the Sun. I directed and wrote it. The films that I enjoyed working on the most was probably uh, Modern Times which premiered at this year's Real Out Film Festival. My favorite project was my 106 project, Bird. Um, I wrote it a few years ago when I was first starting out into screenwriting. I started out with screenwriting and um, it was essentially my baby. I basically, I, I just formed this thought that just started out as an idea in my head and then it just, it actually <laughs> became a reality and seeing that on screen was incredible. Real Out Spicy Maestro. That was really fun. It was Spicy Maestro, which Jane Kim directed. And it was just such a fun set to be on. I was just really happy to be a part of it. It's really fun. I worked on Bunny Boy, and that film taught me uh, all about being on a set, on a physical film set, and working with the cast and the crew, and uh, really just how to, how to interact in this whole little ecosystem. Uh, and it taught me how to be a professional. They're all horrible and they're all fantastic. The 106 that I was production manager for this year, In Her Room. I have a love-hate relationship with my film, In Her Room, just because I love it, because it was like my, my baby, you know? I like worked so hard on it, and that's also like the hate thing, because it's been, it's too soon, like I spent so much of myself in it, but to finally have it done and see it, and to see it like in Pollock was amazing, and, I think that was like, yeah, one of the best moments of the film major too here at UCSB. My favorite project that I've worked on would probably have to be the time that I fell in love on the bike path. I see you, but did you see me? You're fucking through my head like a fantasy. So come back now.
My favorite times as a film and media studies major, I'll just remember all of the awesome people. We were together, whether it was studying for a final, research for a paper, doing an actual film production set. Everybody knows each other, everybody loves each other, and you know, I just met a ton of great people. And I'm forever thankful for that. So many good memories. Every year I've loved going to Real Loud. It's just definitely one of my favorite film events that we hold in the film department. I almost got stabbed by my roommate. Our favorite memory was in 101A, and uh, we were in Buchanan, Battleship Potemkin. There were like six people there because everyone seen that movie at least like 10 times. Three people were asleep, but the rest of us had brought a bottle of a $6 wine in and were uh, drinking in the back in Buchanan. Hooking up with one of my TAs. I think that just UCSB has given me a lot of incredible memories. I'm too close to it right now to be naming favorites. In a week and a half from now, then there'll be memories, and then I'll be able to reflect more. But as it is right now, it's just a big confluence of greatness and, and you know, terror. When you graduate, keep on learning, keep on teaching, and remember, to edit yourself. Phil and Media, this is Joe. You have a bunch of choices ahead of you, maybe for the first time. And you've got things where you think that you have to make certain choices and you have to choose things maybe that you don't want to. Let's make the choices of the things that you actually really want. Work with the people that you want to work with. Try different things. Try new things. And don't just sort of right away pigeonhole yourself into what you think you have to do. A couple things that I would consider doing would be to contact people who are doing things that you'd like to do. Ask them, how did you get where you are? What mistakes have you made? What advice can you give? Get in there. Get your feet wet with uh, different projects. Be kind. Be dependable. Your reputation is going to carry you through. How you deal with other people is going to be really important out there in the world. Um, crew dynamics is super important, so be dependable, be nice, be on time. Always make sure you enjoy now. I think a lot of times people get really sort of um, caught up on where they want to be in like five years. I think it's always important to, to enjoy what you're doing at this very moment. Just try and keep that in your life. Your ambitions are going to change every day. Every time you accomplish something, you're going to want to accomplish something else, which is great, but also enjoy the day. Ah, is it time for me to pontificate? Make yourself happy. Make a little bit of money. Make sure that you make a difference in the world because the world is a troubled place and it needs sincere people. Hi everybody, I hope uh, you guys are gonna have a brilliant future and whatever you do, don't forget us. We always like to see you again, come visit, bring your project, bring, your, bring yourselves and remember from the words of somebody very, very wise, do or do not, there is no try.